Well, welcome back to my channel and yet another video about Flat Earth Idiots and in particular Nathan Oakley and his little buddy Sleeping Warrior. And what we're covering here is another video about this Flat Earth housekeeping nonsense that they go on about every single show. Okay, so the last time I made a video about the geometric horizon. So they claim that we don't have a geometric horizon. Well, I well and truly put that to bed. Now, it didn't take long for Nathan Oakley to pick up, cherry pick if you like, a couple of the lines that I made. And of course, you'd expect that from Nathan Oakley because he needs to be able to fool stupid people so that they'll give him money. That's all it's about. He is a first class con man. So I'm not making that up. Nathan Oakley actually said this on his last show. So what he said was, that he went over to Mind of God's channel, who had cherry-picked this phrase from my video, and then he's taken the juicy bit, his own words, the juicy bit, and put it in his video. If that is not willful dishonesty, nothing is. The guy is an absolute charlatan. How you people who follow him can't see that is totally beyond me. You are just batshit crazy. Okay, so this is not going to be any different. Well, this video here is about their claim that there's no evidence of gravity. Well, I think the very first one knocks that claim on the head. You see, because if you drop something, that's evidence of gravity. Whether or not you think that evidence uh, concludes uh, why gravity happens, that doesn't make a difference. It is evidence of gravity. So, that was pretty stupid right off the bat, isn't it, eh? Well, let's see if we can explain this a little bit about gravity just to put this in some context. Well, first of all, gravity, as explained by Einstein, is when you have a sphere or any type of object that has mass and creates a well in space-time, okay? So, what I mean by space-time is position, 3D position, intersecting with time. Now. Objects with mass will create a well in that four-dimensional area, if you like. And the amount of gravitational field that it'll create, in other words, the amount of, of well space, if you like, will depend on the mass of that object. So let's have a look over here. Over here, I've got the Earth. And as you can see, the Earth is surrounded by a gravitational field. And as I said, this is because of the well that Earth's mass creates in space-time. So, if you extend that further over here, you'll see that if you take a very, very small bit of that, it'll look like it's so flat. Oh, there you are, Nathan Oakley. There's something for you to steal and put on your channel. Okay, what we see is things falling to the Earth at the same time. Why do they fall to the Earth at the same time? Because they're all in the same gravitational well because they're all subject to the same gravitational field that's why they fall at the same time and it happens to be a measurable 9.81 meters per second squared you know something mr nathan oakley and mr riley you can actually measure that okay so let's have another look at another one asteroids on the 6th of the 6th 2020 that's like today over here no, that's tonight we can expect to see an asteroid. Now this asteroid is around about 4.8 million kilometers away, about about 3 million miles. And this asteroid is around about uh, 570 meters in diameter. That's a pretty nasty piece of work. If that were to hit the Earth, it would most definitely cause a great catastrophe. So, Mr. Oakley, Mr. Riley, how do we know that? How do we know that this thing is on the way? How did we predict where it's going to be? How did we do that? Is it just magic? Did we just have magic? If you look in the sky tonight, you'll see this thing. How come we knew that? Think about it. How would you work it out using your flat earth math? Your theory of flat earth? Your hypothesis of flat earth? How would you explain this asteroid? So tell me about your container, Mr. Oakley. You keep banging on about your container. Well, tell me, where does this asteroid hide underneath this container? And more than that, what flings it away? What flings it up? 
as they've got a flat earth catapult, but you never thought of anything like that. Of course not. But you don't need to, because the stupid people who follow you are too stupid to realise that. Well, you never know. Maybe one or two of them will listen to this. So, when the asteroid has finished its business in the sky, where does it go? Underneath your dome. Mr. Oakley, Mr. Riley, think about that one too. Where does it hide? And how do we know when it's going to pop up next? When you're going to catapult it again into the sky. How do we know that? All right, another one. Projectile motion. Well, these two formulas were actually produced by Newton. V squared equals U squared plus 2GS and S being the distance is equal to UT plus half AT squared. Because everything that you throw, every projectile, forms a parabolic path. And have a look at this. It's described right here in half GT squared. How do you, on your flat earth uh, mat, describe the path of a projectile? Let's have a look across here. We've got two vectors for projectile motion. One, horizontal, calculated with uh, velocity times the cos theta, and a vertical one, which is velocity times sine theta. Those two vectors together give us the final velocity, which is the velocity at this end. Let's say this uh, daredevil over here is going to uh, clear this river. We can calculate exactly how fast this daredevil has to travel to get over to the other side of the river. We could do that, and they do that all the time. You see, they don't often crash. This is, this is almost always successful. Why is it successful? That's because they know exactly how fast they have to have for their initial velocity. So they're always going to end up on the ramp. How would you calculate it, Mr. Oakley? I don't think you'd even be able to do the math to do it. Even if you, I don't know, if you live to be a thousand. Because you are minorly more intelligent than the people that follow you. What's another one? Well, let's look across here. You see, as much as you'd like to deny space, we do have rockets. Rockets do go up. And, you know, they have cameras on board, and you can see the Earth with those cameras. Okay? You can deny that as much as you like. And you have to deny that. You have to make a spectacle of yourself, Mr. Oakley, denying that. Because that's how you get your money from stupid people. Okay, so if the force of thrust is greater than is greater than the mass times the gravity, the gravitational field, so we have to take that into account, that gravitational field, then the rocket will go into orbit. The, if the thrust is less than the mass times the gravitational field, then the rocket won't get into orbit. It will come back to Earth. Well, you know, when they put uh, fuel and oxidizer on a missile, for instance, they don't want the missile to go into orbit. They just want it to hit um, that city over there. So they only just put enough fuel on it and enough oxidizer so it'll just get there. It won't go into orbit. You see, that's how that works. So, again, a major, major piece of evidence for gravity, projectile motion. If you disagree, Mr. Oakley, come up with a solution for a projectile motion for yourself. You know something? If you did, you'd be rich. But of course you won't. All right? The best thing you could ever do is push trolleys in a supermarket. That's your lot. You know why? Because you squandered your education. That's why. Good on you. So now you've got to make a life of stealing money from stupid people. Shame on you. Okay, folks, if you like my video, get ready to watch the next one. And you'll know that the next one's coming because you will have pressed the subscribe button and the bell. And press the like or the dislike, whatever floats your boat. We'll get on to the next one soon. 
I'm sure that Mr. Oakley will come here and try to steal some of this for some little cherry-picked clip that he has. See you later. Cheers.